Hello, and thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Anna Tony. I am the Executive Director at Leadership Toledo, and we are very excited to have another session of our Community Leadership Series, so generously sponsored by First Energy Foundation. Um, today, we have Rodney Easton with us from Principal Business Enterprises. Rodney is a huge fan of Leadership Toledo, and um, we are also a huge fan of his. So Rodney is actually an alum of our program. His son went through our program. So we, uh, I, Rodney, you served on the board too at one point. So, um, so yeah, so there's a lot of connections there. So we're really excited to have him joining us today. Um, I'm going to let him get into his talk, but before that, I'll do a little uh, bio here for you, and then Rodney, I will pass it over to you. So Rodney Easton is a transformational leader with a passion for human capital strategy, talent management, and leadership development. He possesses over 25 years of experience in operations management, training, safety, and human resources leadership. Rodney currently serves as Vice President of Human Resources for Principal Business Enterprises, a manufacturer of highly absorbent products in Bowling Green, Ohio. You've probably seen them going down uh, 475, 75 there, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Prior to joining PBE, Rodney gained extensive experience in cross-functional roles throughout his career. He served as Operations Manager, Training and Safety Manager, and HR Supervisor at UPS. Rodney also served as a regional human resources manager at Fifth Third Bank before transitioning to the Andersons, where he recently held the role of human resources director for the Plant Nutrient Group and Corporate Services Group. Rodney attended the University of Cincinnati, receiving a bachelor's degree in marketing and management, and later received a master of business administration from Heidelberg University. He is certified as a senior professional in human resources and the Society of Human Resources Management senior certified professional. Born and raised in Toledo, Ohio, Rodney is focused on continuous improvement for the region. He serves on the Toledo Library Legacy Foundation Board and is a member of the Society of Human Resources Management. He is a graduate and former board member of the 2007 class of Leadership Toledo and is a former co-chair of the United Way African American Leadership Council. Rodney enjoys spending time with his wife of over 19 years, Sheila, and his two children, Donovan and Nia. Outside of work, you can find him reading, watching sports, and volunteering at his church and in the community. So a huge welcome to Rodney, and I will send it over to you. All right. Thank you, Anna. Can you hear me clearly? Okay. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, I'm going to pull my screen up here and share it with the rest of you, but I'm super excited to have this conversation with you. And most importantly, um, I want to thank Anna and her team for pulling together this incredible um, leadership series. Uh, it's been dynamic. Um, there's a number of people who have spoken already who I do wanna shout out because um, there's so much leadership that's been shared and leadership concepts and uh, best practices. So Sarah Best, Matt, Max Lambden, Craig Teamer. And if you didn't see last week's with Ambria from Art Construction, Oh my God, phenomenal. So if you, if you get a chance, I encourage you to go back and look at those if you haven't already and really glean from the, the uh, experience and all of the best practices that were shared um, in that group or from those individuals. Um, I do wanna give a quick shout out to Movember. Um, participating in Movember, I'm, I'm trying to get it going here, but Movember is uh, basically for men's health and wellness and growing out your beard just to show your support. So I'm making my best attempt at that. But uh, for those of you men who wanna join in with that and really focus on men's health, um, please do that. I think it's an important piece, an important thing to do in, in, uh, currently in this season that we're in, but also just throughout life. So one shout out for, for them. Um, so let's jump in, let's jump in. I am excited to have this conversation. Uh, when I was thinking about the topic and thinking about 2020, which none of us anticipated. Um, there's never been a time that I can think of in my career where we've had so many different challenges happening at one time. Um, but also think about those challenges and how they shape my career and how they shape those around me, but more importantly, what they do to grow us and develop us over time. The topic that I chose of leadership pain is because leadership pain is part of leadership. Leadership pain can also be defined as challenges that we go through that really help to develop our capacity as leaders. The, chief, the challenge I see though in talking to leaders is we really don't like to talk about this a lot. We complain about it, but we don't really talk about how to navigate through it and really shift our mindsets to, a, to, to more of 
not just looking at leadership pain and challenges as things that are happening to us, but how do we insert ourselves into the challenge? Almost the analogy I would draw is a firefighter going into the fire versus running away from the fire. Our natural affinity as leaders is to run away. Nobody likes pain. I don't like pain. But over time as leaders, it's good to develop um, an acumen and a, um, a fortitude that when a challenge comes, we don't panic. We take a step back. We think about what's, what's about to happen before jumping, writing a solution and thinking about what opportunities we can glean from that, not just for ourselves, but for those around us. So, you know, when I looked at this first slide, I, I really want this to be a conversation. Um, in this virtual world, we have to adjust. So imagine me and you sitting down, having a conversation about leadership. Um, I'm going to talk about a little about, about relationships later in, our, in the presentation, but I think one of those best practices will be to really have conversations and talk about it. Some of you might be in your living room, some of you are in your guest room, some of you are stuck in the corner of a basement, some of you might actually be in the office, but wherever you are, whatever place you're in, I really want to have a conversation. So I'm going to apologize in advance because I'm going to challenge you. And I'm saying that to be nice, but in, in all reality, I do want to challenge you because as leaders, we are carrying a lot of weight sometimes. We're carrying a lot of responsibility, but there are a lot of people who depend on us. And part of being in leadership is um, understanding that. For those of you who mentor or lead teams or lead nonprofits or whatever that thing that you lead, just realize that you can lead it. You can do it with grace. You can do it with, with um, strategy. And most of all, you can do it in a place where you get a lot out of it. So. I don't want to waste your time. I'm going to jump right in here. And at the end of this presentation, what I believe is your, your shift, there'll be a shift in your mindset, there'll be a shift in your thinking. And I'm going to share some, some stories or some things about me that I've learned in my leadership point of view. But also, I'm going to share some best practices that'll help you get through that. So I think the first thing is, is leadership point of view. Um, some of you may have heard this before. Some of you um, may, may get some things, um, reinforce some things out of this. But all of us have a leadership point of view. All of us come in, into leadership and in the process of leadership, our leadership point of view is shaped. You know, when I first got into leadership, um, this, is what, this is kind of what my focus was. Uh, if you're not familiar with this scene, this is from one of my favorite series, The Godfather. And this is, this is Don Colleon, and this is a, a constituent of his kissing his ring, just thanking him for his help. But my view was, is when I get that title, when I get into leadership, People are just going to fall at their knees. They're going to do everything I wanted them to do. And what I really learned is that's not really how it works. What I really learned is the haze that you see in this next uh, caption is this is what leadership is. It's the chaos. It's running back and forth, trying to get vision, um, sometimes falling one way or the other. It's the road that's not straight, that we like to be straight, but that has curves and turns and ebbs and flows. This is really how your leadership point of view is, is developed. This is kind of where I want to really talk to you about, okay? So here's my ask of you. First of all, I'm gonna have a poll question a little bit later in the presentation, but also once you get a, a, some pen, paper, phone app, computer, whatever you use to take notes, but I'm gonna ask you to write down some things and really log some things that, that, that will, you will take from this presentation that you can um, use for yourself. Also, I want you to be chat ready throughout the presentation. Please, I want to make this interactive. Ask questions, um, respond. There'll be some times we'll take some pauses and chat, but I really want you involved in this because again, this is our virtual communication. This is our virtual meeting, me and you having a conversation about leadership. So here's what we're going to do today. I'm going to talk to you about what is leadership pain? Okay, what do we mean by that, right? What is leadership pain? And then, then really talk about how does this help us grow, develop, and increase our capacity and then I'll transition into some best practices that I use that I believe will help you either reinforce what you already know, learn some new things that you may not be doing now, but also really, really bring back some things that are really basic and foundational that are, that are good for all of us to know, okay? At the end, I'll open it up for some Q&A, um, but I really, really want to give you an opportunity to, uh, to glean from this opportunity, so, okay. Leadership Pain, one of my favorite authors, this is Sam Chand. Um, I will be mentioning some book, some um, 
information from his book, but he wrote a book on leadership pain um, probably about six, seven years ago. When I first picked this book up, you know, I was kind of intrigued, of course, by the cover and, and this whole notion of what pain is. But what he describes in this book is that in order to really grow, there is pain involved, okay? Uh, pain can include everything from the situations you walk through, decisions, the things that we carry, but most of all, you cannot grow without pain. Now, I know he's smiling there and I want you to smile. It's gonna be okay. I know we're having a rough year, but I also want you to understand and embrace that this particular concept. So I'm gonna take two seconds here and transition to a quick video, just to give you kind of an overview of um, what Sam Chan talks about with leadership pain. Hi, my name is Sam Chan. Today, I wanna to talk to you about one simple sentence. You will grow only to the threshold of your pain. You will grow only to the threshold of your pain. In my leadership consultation work all over the world, sacred, secular, ministry, marketplace, really doesn't matter, I found the one differentiating, differentiating factor between somebody who is a high level leader and somebody who might be stagnating, might be plateauing. And the number one reason, the number one reason is pain. Your ability to handle pain. The more pain you can handle, the higher you can go. Uh, so the idea is very simple. Four lines. Line number one, growth equals change. Line number two, change equals loss. Line number three, loss equals pain. Therefore, the fourth line is growth equals pain. So in all of our lives, we have a pain capacity a pain capacity, here's the pain capacity, here's the pain capacity. If you can move this pain capacity higher, here, you can grow higher. The number one reason why leaders don't grow, why their organizations don't grow, why their churches don't grow, why their companies don't grow, is not financial, it's not administrative, it's not location, it's not media, it's not PR, all those things are important, please trust me, all those things are important, but the number one reason is the pain threshold of the lead leader. If you're listening to me, and you're the lead leader, sacred, secular, doesn't really matter. Doesn't matter what genre of work you're in. If you are the lead leader, your pain threshold is either going to elevate you, plateau you, stagnate you, or even take you lower. Because there's something within us that says, I don't want pain. but I call that bleedership. If you're leading, you are bleeding without bleeding. So here's what I want you to know. You wanna go higher? You gotta break through those pain thresholds because the higher you wanna go, the higher pains. And something within us would much rather run from pain. I want you to know you can understand pain you can embrace pain, you can move forward through pain, and as you lead through pain, you become a better leader, people see and appreciate you more, your respect goes up, and you can break through the ceiling that is so artificial that you can break, not through th things you do, but embracing the higher the sentence, here's the sentence, here's the sentence. You will grow only to the threshold of your pain. So how do we manage through discomfort? Pain, pain comes, but pain also goes. But pain produces results. You know, kind of attribute this to working out. You know, when you're working out, we all have this vision of what we're gonna look like after we lift weights or do push-ups or sit-ups or whatever that workout you do. But the discomfort is part of the process. Resistance is, is what something that brings results. But a lot of times as leaders, we walk into these things with the, with the whole notion of getting out of it as quick as possible. And look, I understand that. I think that's important. It is not that we want to stay in it. But the one challenge is, how do we go and challenge, when challenges are come, how do we also think about opportunity? How do we think about opportunity? 
most times what I see is 80% of the time is focused on getting out, but only about 20% of the time is about the opportunity. And generally it's not focused at us. It's the opportunity to fix it. It's the opportunity to make it not happen again. All of those things are important, but how do we shift our mindset to see challenges and opportunity happening at the same time and really seeing and changing our view about how that looks and what the result will be on the other side of it. So the focus is on our leadership capacity. Leadership capacity um, is really important to the point where there are certain leaders in my life, mentors that carry a certain weight. I attribute that to capacity. And what that weight looks like in reality is when they walk into a room, there's something about them where you know they've been through something. They've overcome challenges. It's not their title. It's not their attitude. It's not what they were wearing that day. It's a presence you feel that changes the atmosphere when they walk into a room, a space, or even a situation. The kind of leader that we should be growing and developing to is when you show up, people feel like something's going to happen. People feel, people feel like you're going to change the challenge that we're currently facing. But in order to do that, you've got to really, really understand those challenges and how they shape your leadership capacity. So what are those challenges? I would define it as probably four things or maybe more, okay? But the four things I want to talk about, first of all, is decisions. In the space that we're currently living in, um, in this season, with all of the challenges, challenges we have with us, sometimes these decisions aren't so clear. And the reality as a leader is whatever road you take, criticism is waiting on you, second guessing is waiting on you, um, how you could have done it differently is waiting on you, but a decision has to be made. So as a leader, one of the challenges that do increase our capacity is owning decisions, making a decision, using all the information you have in front of you, but owning that decision. Not being scared of the criticism, yes, being concerned, yes, being aware, but understanding that a decision needs to be made. Some of the things that really hurt us is when we don't make a decision, which is also a decision in itself. So decisions is one of the things that is, is kind of one of the challenges that help build your capacity and the ability to make those. The second is carrying what I would call carrying weight. Carrying weight includes things like confidential information, challenges that you're having with your staff um, that are ongoing, that you're trying to fix, challenges you may be having with the leader that you work for. But there's a weight that you carry from leadership that is almost like pulling a boulder up some stairs. It's part of the role. But the, but the thing is we can overcome that. And the fact that carrying that weight is part of what builds your capacity. The next is standing alone. There are times in your leadership and your leadership when your leadership point of view is, is, is being shaped, as well as in your career, whatever, whatever situation you're leading, where you might be the only one in the room feeling a certain way or believing a certain thing. You can, you can, you can associate that with convictions, with principles, with things that you believe, your faith, but there are times when as a leader, you're gonna stand alone. You might be the only one in the crowd who believes a certain thing or is heading in a certain direction but that is part of leadership. That builds your capacity and not being afraid to do that is something that grows you immensely. And then it's our favorite one, conflict, okay? I am sure uh, there's plenty of conflict happening in a lot of our worlds, but how do we see conflict as an opportunity to develop things like patience and perseverance and persistence and, and, and growing your capacity to the point where you don't avoid conflict, but you go into conflict thinking solution-minded, but also opportunity. So we're gonna do a quick poll. Uh, Anna, I'm gonna go ahead and have you drop that up. I wanna get a sense of which one of those four are more prevalent in your life. So let me give you a second to answer this poll. Okay, I see managing conflict is leading so far. Standing alone, okay, it's shifting. Yeah, managing conflict looks, okay. Thank you. We got most of you in. Okay, about 10 more people and then we'll shut it down. Okay. 
Okay. Looks like 53% for managing conflict, 20% for standing alone on principle, 13% for carrying the weight of responsibility, and then another even 13% for making tough decisions. Okay, so managing conflict seems to be the winner at this time, which is not surprising to me at this time. Okay, uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, okay, there we go. I think everybody can see that now, okay. Okay. So here's the key. Move this forward. We will all be faced with what I call turn back moments. Out of however you answered this last polling question, each of those are going to be presented in your leadership journey when you're walking down the road of your leadership with the opportunity to turn back. And what I would encourage you to do is understand that that's the moment where you continue to develop your capacity. If you continue to go forward, you're going to increase your capacity. When you turn back, what essentially you're doing is it's going to come back again. The road that you're going, this is the path. Every time you turn back, what that means is, is down the road, you're going to have to face that again. So when you see an opportunity, when you see a challenge, that's the opportunity is to keep going is to persevere above it, is to, is, to, is to look at overcoming it and not necessarily avoiding it. You know, when I think of conflict, um, holistically and the leaders that I deal with, um, whether you're a VP or you're just getting into leadership, the one common thing, and I'm not surprised by the poll, is conflict. How to manage it, how to lead through it, how to resolve it. But the challenge I see mostly is the, the avoidance of it. So just remember and take this as a note, there will be turn back moments when you're walking through your, your path of leadership. Overcoming them will expand you, will increase you in every way. So keep going, persevere. Now, I know this is a heavy topic, so I do like to have a little bit of fun. So I'm gonna take a quick break, a little heavy on some of these challenges. And I am a huge fan of despair.com. Now, if you've never been to despair.com, and I'm gonna date some of you, some of you, Remember when you walked into whatever company you work for at the time that these kind of posters were hanging up everywhere. And it's almost like in every office, there was some kind of thing. This is one of my favorite, perseverance, the courage to ignore the obvious wisdom of turning back. So the whole notion of despair.com is to kind of make light of some of these um, phrases. But I think we also have to laugh at ourselves too. Sometimes we can't be too serious all the time and, and lose sleep over certain small things you know, sometimes you have to just take a step back and kind of level set. But also like to, to laugh because sometimes, you know, the challenges we go through is, is there is no leadership, okay? So this one says leaders are like eagles. We don't have either of them here. <laughs> but the, the idea is attitude is everything, okay? It's good to laugh. It's good to discuss. But attitude really matters so much. I know this is not the first time you heard it. Probably won't be the last time you heard it. But it is so critical. I would rather have someone with a go forward, get it done attitude versus someone who thinks they know it all, but has a bad attitude. Attitude can overcome a lot of situations, but how you think about a thing really matters. And this is the goal. If you don't know who this is, this is Joey Chestnut. Uh, he's 36 old. He's like 6'1", 230. Uh, recently in July of 2020, he won his 13th eating championship or hot dog eating championship with Nathan's. And I think the record was 75 hot dogs. Now, of course, that's not what I'm encouraging you to do. But the point is, this visual is, you know, champions, which all of you are, or on your way to being one, eat challenges for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, okay? This is the nap. This is where we're going. This is what we should try to build when we're walking down our, our, our road to leadership, but also shaping our leadership point of view. So hold on to this visual. Think of yourself as someone who takes challenges easily, bring them on. I'm ready for them, but most of all, shift to how do we navigate through leadership pain? How do we navigate through leadership pain? What I'd like to share with you now are some of the best practices that I use um, personally to help navigate through the conflict carrying the weight of responsibility, making tough decisions, 
as well as times when you have to stand alone. What are the intentional strategic things that you do to help shape your point of view and you put it into place and you put it in as a practice and the discipline as a leader to help you through these challenges. Now, I am not gonna suggest that all of these are foolproof or it's gonna make your life easy all the time because leadership is a challenge. What I can tell you though, is if you're intentional, you increase your chances of walking through any leadership pain, any challenges with a greater level of success. So first of all, it starts about how do you think? How do you think, okay? The second thing is, which is related to your head, the second thing is, is what do you believe? What's in your heart? What do you believe? What do you believe about yourself, okay? The fourth is, what do you do with what you think and what you believe? How do you action on that? And then the last thing is, is where are you going? Where are you going? What road are you trying to walk down? What, you know, are you trying to be the VP of, or do you want to be in power? Politics, or do you want to head down this road? All of this is designed to be intentional and to shape your leadership life in a way to increase your capability, developing your leadership point of view, but becoming that champion at each challenges for breakfast. So let's start with your head. What are you learning? I am a big fan of learning. You know, I thought when I graduated college, uh, it was over. It was it. I was, I was done. I got my degree. I remember, you know, walking into my first couple of my first job interviews thinking that, okay, I, you know, you see my degree, I'm, I'm good here, right? And what I realized is in, in the mentoring I got was, no, you know some things, you just haven't practiced some things. So the thing that's the focus on is you are always learning something. I don't care what you're going through, what challenges are on your table, you are always learning something. But this graphic is really a depiction of learning. It's not always straight. Sometimes there's curves. Sometimes there's things that, that, that happen to you that you, you weren't expecting. But this one, one person, a leader that I used to work for told me one thing, Rod, whatever you're doing, you're learning two things, what to do and what not to do. Sometimes if you're working for a challenging leader, right now you're just complaining, upset. And I'm not talking abuse, I'm talking to someone who's just maybe not great at leadership, you're still learning. So still take notes. You at least learn what you're not, what not to do. But also look at people who are great leaders. What do they do? What are their practices? Okay. Is we have been afforded through technology. Um, my learning strategy generally begins with books. I'm kind of old school that way. I like actually like to have a book. But I also understand that there's these other resources like podcasts, blogs, vlogs. And one of my favorite things to do is sit and learn from others. Okay, I'm a, obviously you can see I'm an extrovert. I love to communicate, but that is a really, really important thing. However you learn, you need to have a learning strategy. Learning strategy can be simply this. What do I do intentionally to learn about things I don't know things that I need to know. And, and one really, really important thing that most people that actually overlook is things that I don't agree with. It's not a good practice to only align with what you like. Sometimes you should learn things that you don't like, okay? Or things that you don't agree with, just to get an understanding of two sides of a situation. Some of the challenging things I hear from leaders is when they have a one-sided point of view, okay? They only lean and listen to one side without really trying to understand the other side. So everything else in our life has a maintenance plan. We take our cars in to get fixed. We bring people out to fix things in our houses. But I don't see a, a lot of us working on ourselves. What do you do to work on yourself? Things that build your job skills. We can get continuing education credits. Those are all good. This is more about things you put into place that help with your learning. So. Quick break for a group chat. Let's chat for a second. What is your favorite leadership book, blog, vlog, or podcast, and why? So let's all jump into the chat room and let's just share with one another. Let's have a conversation. Let's share. So I'm going to give 30 seconds. And Anna, if you want to read off anything that people are sharing, please feel free to. I started with saying Rising Strong by Brene Brown. Um, we have Simon Sinek's 
Simon Sinek's What's Your Why? 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, Mindset by Carol Dweck, Good to Great by Jim Collins, Level 5 Leaders and Humility. Good. Start with Why again, and said there's a great TED Talk with that. Cy Wakeman. Yeah, like Cy. Uh, big Cy. Now, now Discover Your Strengths by Marcus Buckingham. Yes. Yes. Okay. Take some of those suggestions, connect with people on that. I like to throw a lot of that out there to, uh, to give you guys some other suggestions, um, but those are good. Obviously, Leadership Pain is one that I throw out there as well, but those are all good and great books, okay? All right, let's keep it moving. The next thing, I already talked about head, but the next thing is heart. What do you believe? What do you believe? Head really focuses on creativity, solutions, awareness, things you learn, kind of help in those areas, but your heart really focuses on influencing your actions, okay? Developing confidence, clarifying your experiences. And when I say clarifies experiences, the experiences you go through really help to shape your leadership point of view, but reading and balancing that with learning helps to clarify, okay, what did that mean? How did that really help me? But then it also determines your preferences. Really, really important how you see yourself, okay? You know, this is a good depiction of a, a kitten who's looking in the mirror and seeing a lion, but it's really, really important how you see yourself. And there's a number of best practices I have, and I'm gonna focus on one that I think is the most critical about what you believe and how it shapes how you believe, to, with your, uh, believe about yourself, okay? And it's really relationships. The one critical issue for most leaders as they're walking down their road towards leadership is blind spots, is blind spots. It is your relationships can really help you with blind spots. I'm sure, I, I know I've got a couple of friends who may be looking at this now who are really, really close friends with me. Um, you need people around you who are going to, but also have your best interests in mind. I often tell my mentees, if you show me your friends, I'll show you your future. The people you hang around, the people who are connected to you, drive and shape where you're going. And as a leader, you have to have a conscious awareness about relationships to help develop, to help with your blind spots. You should ha always have people in your life who will tell you the truth. The worst thing, and we all see it, is someone who gets all positive feedback but no constructive feedback. So the question is, is how do you walk through that? Now, the one thing about relationships are they're always under construction. Even those who are close to you um, are helping you build your leadership point of view, but also helping you with your, your leadership walk, okay? So your relationships are under construction, but here's, here's the important piece. You have to know which people are in which groups, okay? For example, the first group, and, and there's really three C's to this, okay? So three C's, there's a good chance to write, some, write this down. The first group that I, that I think about is your colleagues. Now, colleagues are people you network with, people you know, people you say hi and bye to, you associate with, but it's a really large group, okay? People you might be connected with on LinkedIn. Um, yeah, your Facebook friends, but not, not everybody on Facebook is your friend. They should probably change that to like associate or something, but. If you got 2,000 friends, you really don't have 2,000 friends, nor do you want 2,000 friends. But colleagues is the big group, people, just a lot of people you know, and you should know them. I'm a big fan of networking. I think it's extremely important in your leadership development and leadership point of view, but that's the big group. The next group's a little smaller. I call this your constituents, okay? Leadership Toledo is, is a constituency. You know, you're in, it's the groups you're involved in, the boards you sit on, the associations that you're a part of or membership of, a little bit closer to you, interact with you a little bit more, but they're your constituents. I would describe your constituents are people who are for what you are for and against what you're against. Let me say that one more time. People who are for what you are for, but against what you're against, okay? Neither one of those are bad, but what it does is these are people a little bit more aligned with kind of where you're going. Important group, a group you should have, but here's the point. 
the real critical group, not that the other two are important, is your confidants. Who are the people who are in your inner circle who speak into your life, who give you feedback and advice, who help to, um, who, who are in it for you, high-fiving you, keep going, you can do it, but also sit down and say, hey, Rod, uh, can we talk? That's the kind of people you have to really be careful of, okay? Careful of, not suspicious, but really um, understanding the importance of that group, and more importantly. But it's not just for them, it's for you too. Do you do that for them? The, the groups that you're confident, do you, help, do you help them? Do you uplift them? And when that time runs out, when that changes, you should really understand, are they still in that group or are they not in that group? Because at the end of the day, we're here to help one another. We are to help one another navigate through the challenges, 2020, COVID, whatever you want to name. Leaders help leaders, but you really have to be focused on that group. So again, colleagues, that's the big group. Networks, people you know, most of us have a big group of colleagues. Constituents, people who are for, who are for what we're for and against what we're against, it's only people you interact with a little bit more because again, members of associations, boards, things of that nature. But I want to focus on the confidence. Confidence. So I have a question for you. I have one best practice, and I constantly ask myself this. You have to think of yourself as an executive director. Shout out to Anna Tony. Who's on your board of directors? Who is on your board of directors? When you think about board of directors, these are people who um, are helped. If you're thinking of an, an organization or things of that nature, and you think of yourself as the leader of that organization, your board of directors are there to give you advice, to bring expertise to the table, to bring diversity of thought to the table and, and as well as experience. But they really help to shape that organization. They're, they're there to assist you. But board of directors come and go. Ideally, it's nice to have them stay for a long time. And some will. It doesn't mean all confidants are going to uh, leave you. But you have to really understand who's on your board. And here's one thing um, that I want to talk about as far as diversity. The thing that I don't get um, from some people is why would you want diversity? Life is so much fuller and richer when you have age and all these things that can help shape your life. It's a lot more exciting to have diverse thought in that process. But if you have people around you who think like you, talk like you, that's well, how exciting is that? So when you think about your board of directors, make sure you're thinking about those different things, people who can enrich your life. We give you varying perspectives and different perspectives. But really, really think about that. Now, here's a question, that are Not necessarily that you can ask this of one of your confidants, and here's a best practice. But then you, then you have to ask yourself, are, are they invested in you enough to ask you these same questions? So, for example, is there anything that I do that's hindering my leadership? Do you make yourself vulnerable to your confidants? What's one thing I need to know that's hard for you to tell me? Ooh. What's the one thing I should do more of? And one th thing I should stop doing. So I'm going to take those down. But these are the kind of conversations that I have with my confidence. Why? Self-awareness. And the worst thing you can have, when we talked about it earlier, is blind spots. These kinds of questions and conversations with your confidence help you to cut away the blind spots, but also to shape your awareness. Because the, the hardest thing to do is be walking through leadership and unaware. So this is one list of questions, but there are other kinds of conversations where you really want to shape that group of confidence that you should be talking to your confidence about, but also having them share with you. So here's another best practice. I call this the relationship equation, the relationship equation. If someone is not adding or multiplying you, then they're subtracting and dividing you. So let me say that one more time. If someone in your confidant space is not adding or multiplying you, then they're subtracting and dividing you. So this is one thing that I, that, that I look at, and it's not just them to me, it's me to them. Okay, so take these as best practices. Uh, 
um, the thing that I'm going to ask you to do um, is how do you how do you navigate through that group? Because it's so critical to your leadership point of view and what you believe about yourself. So here's one challenge. Who are you having the wrong group? And what's your plan to change it? So I ask you to take notes. Okay, let me give you a second. Okay, we'll take a couple minutes. Who do you have in the wrong group? And what's your plan to change? I give you another minute. Who do you have in the wrong group? And what's your plan to change it? Challenging question, but I, I just want you to know your leadership is so critical to relationships. Okay. Fourth thing is hands. What are you going to do with what you learn and believe? It's not enough to learn. It is not enough to, to spend time on what you believe in shaping your leadership point of view, specifically to relationships. What are you going to do with that information? What do you put your hands to do? One of my best practices, um, whether you do this with paper, um, I'm a big fan of journaling, but one aspect of journaling is, and I, I'm an iPhone user, I hear a great quote when I'm witnessing or learning from someone else in a presentation like this one. I'll pull that app out and I, and I try to type that because I want to retain that information. And those nuggets are true. That's the best practice I use. You may use a methodology. Is you need to journal your life experiences. Journaling can also be how you came through something and what you learned from it. So you can revert, you can point back to that um, if you go through the same thing again, or if you just want to reflect, okay? Reflection is a good thing. Taking time, cutting off the phone, turning the TV off, and just spend some quiet time thinking about as not just after you go through a situation, but in the middle of a situation as to how it's progressing and whether you're learning. It's that Same slide of challenges and opportunities, okay? But journal your life experiences. This power is, okay? All of you have a superpower. All of you on this, on this um, virtual call have a superpower. Do you know what that is? Do you know what your strengths are? I think someone mentioned the book Strength Finders. Awesome book. I, I believe for development, you should definitely focus on your strengths and manage the things that you are uh, developing or weaken. I don't like to focus on weaknesses. I need to get them to a manageable level. This comes with self-awareness. This comes with um, learning and what I believe about myself. But what is my role? What am I really, really, really good at? So let me just share with you a little bit about my superpower. What I know about myself is I'm a good number two. I'm a good number two. What I mean by that is I'm really good at supporting leaders. Okay, I'm really good at shaping leaders who I work for, as well as sitting and giving them feedback, almost to the first slide and sitting down and having conversations. That has really shaped my career. It's gotten me to where I am, but that's what I'm good at. But it's also something I really love to do. Okay, it's important for you to know your role and know this about yourself, because the thing that some leaders do is it, 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 comparing yourselves to others. It creates jealousy, envy, competition, intimidation when you're trying to be like someone else. I am the best Rodney Eason you're going to meet, at least in Toledo, unless there's another Rodney Eason in Toledo. I don't know if there is. But I'm the best Rodney Eason. There's, none of you on this call can be better at being Rodney Eason than me. But the same thing is for you. Okay, You're the best person you are. Focus on being that best person. The other piece, too, is in your career, what I find is some people are focused on the next role before they've gotten good at the current role, okay? So knowing your role, knowing your superpowers, knowing your strengths, doesn't mean you can't learn other things, doesn't mean you don't need to increase your capacity in other spaces, but when you really know who you are and really know what you're, really, what you're good at, you thrive in, and, you, and I call it your superpower. So some of you may have multiple superpowers, 
I know that I have that superpower and we may develop other superpowers that I don't have now through my leadership journey and developing my leadership point of view. But it's very important to know your role, okay? Now, one of the challenges of 2020, and really not just 2020, but specifically in 2020, is making sure you're focused on wellness, okay? Focusing on wellness at this time is really important. Eating, um, reflecting, spending some time learning and developing. But I, I, you know, when I thought about this presentation, I really wanted to emphasize this notion um, because I think more than any time that I can remember, wellness is super important right now, okay? There's lots of ideas that come around wellness, but I thought it was important to say, as we're going through these challenges, as you're becoming a champion that eats challenges for breakfast, you can't get there if your mind and your body aren't in good shape. So I really wanna encourage you, take care of yourself, get exercise, eat right. I like to eat, but I have to learn how to eat right, okay? But it's really, really important, your friends, spend time with folks. I know it's virtually now, but reach out to people, check on people, okay? One of the things I always tell my friends is, if somebody comes to your mind, you need to call them, text them, do whatever, but checking on is not just your wellness, but the wellness of others. So let's do another group chat. Share real quick your uh, favorite wellness activity that you would recommend to other leaders. So let's just kind of drop that into the chat. And Anna, you can go ahead and shout out anything that uh, folks in there. So what is your favorite wellness activity that you would recommend to other leaders? We've got running, massage, going for a walk, yoga, meditation, weightlifting, dry red wine, and great conversation. <laughs> yoga, listening to jazz, gratitude, walking my dog, running, walking alone first thing in the morning, meditation, walking and listening to opera music, yeah. watching curtain reruns. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Okay, I like to dry wet wine. I, I didn't quite see that in the well, in the, uh, in the, in the, <laughs> the word ball, but I'll take it, I'll take it. Okay, Yeah. that helps Dinner, with, dinner with family, hugging my yes. kids. Yes. Having a hobby with people outside your normal group. Ah, that's a good one. That is a good one. Okay, thank you guys for sharing. I really appreciate it. I'm gonna share one, one of mine, which um, I think is really, really important. Feeding others feed you. Everything you all said was spot on and great. There's one I want to share with you that I think um, we often don't think about, but really it, this for me personally is really, really important. Uh, what you see in front of you is a screenshot of Michelle Johnson. I know it's kind of small in the writing, but Michelle just retired from um, serving in, in multiple um, uh, the Air Force as well as uh, the Army. Um, she just retired, or she is retiring on January 1st of 2021. So this is a LinkedIn shot, and I spent a lot of time on LinkedIn um, based on my role, but I also think it's a great place to network with other leaders. And while I don't know Michelle, I just took a quick second to reach out and say, hey, thank you for your service, but also I think it's incredible, your journey, your leadership journey, all the things you do accomplished, continue to go forward and lead. It just really sent her a note. And she responded back, you know, really thank you. I appreciate it. Um, you know, we didn't, we don't really know something great, congratulating her on where she's going, but that little, you don't know what that little note will do for people. Another thing is I talked about texting. So one of the graphics here is people reading a text, but I think the other thing is, is you know, sometimes a short, quick text to let someone know, Hey, I'm thinking about you. I'm praying for you. Um, I got your back. How are things going? Means a lot when it comes to where people are in their leadership journey. I am a little old school in the fact that I love written notes. Written notes to people are extremely effective. And one practice I had, I, there was one company I transitioned to um, um, from one job to the next. And one of the things that me and my confidants and my friends talk about is, it's one thing how you enter a place but it's another thing how you exit a place. One best practice is whether it's coming off a board, coming out of a friendship, coming from one job to the next, is I, I took some time and I wrote down on a legal pad all of the people who impacted my life who are still employed at that company. 
Um, it ended up being 50 something people. I wrote a personal note to all 50 of them, talking specifically to the one, two or three things or more that they did while I was at that organization and how much I appreciated that what they did to help me grow in my leadership. Okay, that it took a lot of time. It took like a week and a half to do, but the impact of that is tremendous. So one of my best practices is by feeding others, it feeds me. The response you get, the thank yous, the you don't know what I was going through when you did that, that is, is one thing that definitely feeds me from a wellness standpoint. So I encourage you, leaders need to help leaders. We need to encourage one another. When you are out and you see people doing great things and you see people accomplishing, you don't have to know them. Congratulate them, thank them, appreciate them. A lot of people, you have no idea what people are dealing with, that that one little thing will be great. So as, you're, as they're developing their capacity and dealing with challenges and all that stuff, it's a great opportunity to do that. But what we really find is it helps you just as much as it helps others. So get your pen and paper out, get your notes out, whatever that is. I want you to list three people that you're going to feed after this session and how. Three people you're going to feed after this session and how. I'll give you another minute. If you don't get the how, that's great, but at least get the three people. The three people you're going to feed after this session and how. Think about those who, who have done some great things. I know some people are coming to mind who could really use your feedback and encouragement. There's three people you're going to feed and how. Okay, 15 more seconds. I know we're moving pretty fast. Okay. So the last thing is where are you going? Where are you going? I didn't, I didn't, I, I, you notice there's a theme of H's. I was going to put feet in here, but it just didn't fit the H's. So just bear with me that I chose heels just to kind of keep all the things, you know, ordered. But where are you going? Do you have a plan? This is not the first time you've heard this, but I think it is super important. What goals do you have? Okay. Kind of where are you going? Your role, your role to success. If, if you just kind of let it happen, that's kind of like a ship that's just sailing um, on the seas. That's not ideal. While careers can ebb and flow in situations with leaders can ebb and flow, it's really good to have a plan. You know, your personal growth doesn't generally just happen. It can happen to you, but it's better that you plan it out. So what are you learning? What strategy? What development do you need? What is your vision? Okay. Do you log your creativity? When things come to your mind, do you write that down? Because sometimes it, 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 it'll leave you and it won't come back. But all this is designed to help with motivation, okay? And all the things that go into your personal growth. So my ask is if you don't have a plan right now, commit to, to completing one, okay? Write down a date. Write down when you're gonna do it. Because if you don't do that, it just is not gonna get done. So if you don't have a plan, commit to completing one. Where you're going has to be on paper, in a file, however you want to do it, but it doesn't just happen. So you need to have a plan. So some key takeaways, and then we'll open it up for questions. Um, again, with the H's, head, where are you learning? What are you learning? Okay. That's the head part of who you are. Your heart, what do you believe about yourself? What do you believe about yourself? How do you develop in your confidence, in your self-awareness, in your leadership point of view? Hands, what are you doing? Okay, it's not just gonna happen. What are you doing with what you learn to believe? And then your heels, where are you going? All of this is designed to navigate leadership pain and the challenges that come with it to shape your leadership point of view. So with that, I really, really thank you for your time. Uh, I tried to share some key things. There's so much more, of course, as you know, I could share, but hopefully you've gotten some things out of this. And I do wanna open up some time for some questions if there are are any. Anna, so I'll let you go ahead and drive that. Yeah, so thank you, Rodney. Really, really great information. And I think um, I, it, it doesn't apply just to 2020, but I think especially during 2020, it, lean, leaning into that pain and, um, you know, learning from it because it's, it's really 
it's hard. It's, I think we, and it doesn't matter if you're working in the office or if you're working at home with your family, like, you know, there's leadership everywhere. So I think you took a, you took a lot, gave us a lot of really helpful information today. So um, we did not have any questions pop up throughout. So yeah. I think if, you know, if anyone has any questions, you know, feel free, we'll leave that there for a second. But uh, I know I thoroughly enjoyed everything here. I've got my paper with notes scribbled all over it. So, <laughs> um, but other than that, let's see here, just a lot of praise for, for what you gave us today. So um, thank you for that. Well, thank you for, Anna, and I really appreciate your leadership. Um, I think this is incredible what you've established. Um, I think going forward, if anybody has a question and wants to reach out to me, I'm heavily on LinkedIn. Um, this is a snapshot of my profile. But thank you, Anna, for your leadership and continued leadership and uh, love Leadership Toledo. It's meant so much to me in my career. And I encourage you, if you're not or have not been a part of Leadership Toledo, you definitely need to be speaking to Anna. So thank you for the time and uh, really appreciate it. Thank you. So thank you all again so much for joining us. Um, we are gonna put an evaluation in the chat there real quick. So if you wouldn't mind taking a look at that. Also, our next Community Leadership Series is on November 18th with Sarah Scow. It's Beyond Busy, the Gift of Your Valuable Time. So um, community-minded professionals can be pulled in many directions and drafted for leadership and service by various causes and organization. In Sarah's presentation, participants will discuss intentional involvement, purposeful growth, and skill set development through community service and the principles of grit, resilience, perspective, and presence. So I know we're really looking forward to that. So again, that's on November 18th. Thanks again to First Energy Foundation for their support of this. And if you guys would please share with your networks if you liked what you learned today. We've got all of the past presentations on our YouTube page. So you can find those there at Leadership Toledo. And um, But share with your networks. We'd love to get more people onto these. It is free. So, you know, there's, there's no barrier there. Again, thank you. I hope you get to enjoy this nice weather over the next couple days. And we will see you on the 18th. Have a great day, everyone.